traveling around these Central American countries is that we camp in campgrounds and we're able to meet so many other overlanding families in these wonderful campgrounds. Today we have an amazing surprise for you. We're here with this really wonderful off-grid family of musicians, writers, analog nomads, if you will. <laughs> I'm Stacy. Matthew. Uh, Raphael. Gabriel. And Django. These guys have been traveling the world in their Airstream for the last six years with these three beautiful little boys in tow. And today we're going to see what it looks like and just kind of how you guys live. So the first thing that strikes me when we come up into the cab is how big it is. I don't think I've ever been in an Airstream before. Matt, why did you pick an Airstream? And tell me a little bit about the engine and how it runs. We chose Airstream because they're very cool and we really wanted to go for that combination of gypsy caravan and spaceship. <laughs> you know, so, Achieved. So it's a Airstream Accelerator motorhome mm -hmm. and it's 1979. No so way! 40 years old this year. Looking good. Um, yes, her name is Merlin the Magic Bus. The main reason we have an Airstream is because of the build quality. They're superb. It's on a, a Chevy P30 chassis and it has a big block 454 Chevy engine. So it's a gas engine, no need to worry about dodgy diesel in because yeah. we travel around the Americas. And uh, it's very powerful and as you know being in Guatemala you've got to have some oomph to get up the hills. Those mountains are killer. Uh -huh. And uh, it's 40 years old, she's 40 years old and the engine's still going strong. This is the part of the van that kind of gets you to where you need to go. This is the cockpit. The cockpit. Uh, so maybe now we'll step back into the living space. Okay, sure. That's it. living area of Merlin and I'm really interested to know kind of how comfortable it is to fit all five of you in here and how do you all spread out? Well this is a big futon that folds into our bed. Over there is the bench seats where the kids actually ride when we're driving. Airstream's done a really nice job with their design because these um, cabinets are kind of slanted yeah. so you have like you can stand up fully. Being musicians on the road we've got a full PA kit, a full scale digital piano, a guitar and a bass guitar. So it all fits in here. <laughs> wow and I've seen you guys play and your setup is pretty huge. Yeah it's and you pretty can't, big. You can't <laughs> see it at all in here. Where does it all fit? <laughs> so under that that bench seat there is um, where some of the music kit is. Under this here is the water tank and then above that is all of our merchandise mm -hmm. like books and albums. It's all neatly hidden. <laughs> <laughs> so you have like a like the bed couch combination over here. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, you have so much additional seating and mm -hmm. the table kind of doubles as like a workspace, lounging yes. and eating area. Yeah, Matthew uses that as like his office space. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll usually take the kids out and give him like the piece that he needs to write. <laughs> Otherwise there's nothing that gets done. And then yeah, usually the kids all sit on the bench here and eat mm -hmm. and we'll pull the full table out and then Matt, you and I are on the other side. So it sounds like uh, you do host people and you do a lot of cooking yeah. and baking. She was saying they make fresh sour sourdough? <laughs> yeah, sourdough bread. Fresh sourdough bread every day. So obviously you put this kitchen to work. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So show me this kitchen. Probably the only 
part that uh, Matthew hasn't redone. <laughs> this is original Airstream design. It's a four burner gas stove and um, gas oven. And yes, we make sourdough bread, or I make sourdough bread <laughs> pretty much every day because it's a big staple, the kids love it. This is a water purifier, but we don't tend to use that one because we have our Berkey. Matthew usually go fill up these. We have two five gallon water jugs and just pour it into the Berkey mm -hmm. and then that's our drinking water. So we don't have to fill up the tank all the time. Those are easier. Yeah. Up here we have um, all of our bowls, plates, Tupperware. This is a control panel. So it tells you how much fresh water, what's in the, the gray water tank, mm -hmm. the battery life, the gas, all that. More storage space for our mugs and spices. This is our fridge. It just locks in and we, Matthew put this in. It's a 12 volt fridge, so it's like a big cooler. It can either be a fridge or a freezer, so um, we usually keep it as a, a fridge or a counter space. There's more counter yeah. space I've cooked here. And, uh, and then I heard there's something special under the fridge. Oh yes, there's a, a um, our, our wine cellar. The temperature seems to be um, pretty pretty stable down there, so we keep um, wine bottles. We play a lot of gigs at wineries and often they'll give us bottles of wine. And so that all goes down there. Next upgrade to our van, please. Uh, wine cellar. Thank you. This is a uh, pantry. So we've got our eggs and all of our, like, our English stuff. Um, Marmite and Coleman's mustard. That's very important for Matthew. <laughs> <And> chocolates, <laughs> oils, and vitamins, and other things that we store up there, like canned goods and pastas, and you know what a pantry has. Mm -hmm. This is like a junk drawer, <laughs> which were our bungee cords, our baby monitors, you know, stuff that needs a place goes there. This is a um, very special drawer. This is our tea drawer since we like to drink a lot of tea. We've got um, English black tea, um, herbal tea, Tulsi, Florida Jamaica, which is hibiscus tea, all, I mean all kinds, pu'er, mate. So that keeps us going. Wow. <laughs> So to explain some of the systems that we got going here and the electrical, the plumbing, and I, I think we should talk to Matthew about that. <laughs> okay, let's go grab Matt. Okay. So obviously you've updated this Merlin the Magic Bus to live in full-time in modern society. So you have mm -hmm. solar on the roof, you have electrical ran through the van. Tell me a little bit about how you're able to, to live in this. Okay, uh, first of all, we try and avoid modern society as much <laughs> as possible. So we have uh, an air conditioning unit which works when we're plugged into shore power, which is Never. So we use <laughs> so we use fans, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of ventilation. We open the windows up, and we get fans blowing the air through. So underneath here, we have our furnace and our water heater. The water heater works um, off the propane, and it also works from the engine. So um, whilst we're driving, if we stop somewhere at the end of the day, we have a hot shower all ready to go nice. without putting on the water heater. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, you know, we cook constantly. We probably fill up with propane once every five or six months. That's really good. Everything runs off of the solar. 450 watts of panels on the roof. Everything runs off 12 volt. We have um, lights are on, you know, dimmers, LEDs, that kind of stuff. We use Lifeline batteries, um, AGMs. So, and all together we have 460 amp hours. And we run this inverter here. So this is, um, 2000 watt sine wave inverter. So that charges our computers and we don't have phones, so we don't have to worry about that. That is something I just gotta say that <laughs> just blows my mind. These guys are, are traveling completely off grid. They don't have phones. We're so analog. I you love know, it. I do all my writing, you know, freehand. You must have great handwriting. <laughs> uh, no, I have dreadful handwriting. <laughs> I hope it takes me hours to decode it afterwards. <laughs> you know, a big part of how we'll, we want to live is we don't really want to have phones mm -hmm. and more than anything it's for, for our children so we don't want our children to be pulled into that kind of stuff too early and we don't need it you know we don't really need phones we travel around all over the place we keep in touch with family and friends uh, on the laptop and that works really well to get around instead of GPS we don't use GPS we use uh, Latino triangulation so we ask three people mm -hmm. and if they all say it's that way then we go that way we need, you know, at least three people to agree, and then and then we we go that way. You know, don't try this at home, kids. But it, you know, it's fun for us. <laughs> so speaking of kids, I've been very interested to see how you fit three kids in here. Let's go, maybe check out their bedroom. Okay, let's yeah. do it.
I'm amazed that you're able to fit three kids in here so comfortably <laughs> and it's yeah. so well organized. Oh, okay, so Matthew did all this construction as well, making the bunk beds. These are all their books that they like to read. Raph is six and Gabe's four, and so um, I've been doing homeschool with them for a few years now. So apart from musical instruments, we've got all this curriculum material on board too. So that's like, I think takes up the most space. That is um, all in this cabinet here. So school supplies and books and games and hard stuff. And down here below is where the rest of the music equipment is stored the adult books so Matthew's books and my books are here and then we've got Matthew's cupboard and my cupboard so this is mine this is pretty much all the clothes that I have um, that's folded and then we've got a closet that we share too this is Matthew's and then here is the closet uh, with jackets so we all share this closet um, my dresses and Matthew's shirts and some of the, boy, the boys jackets too so that's all the space we get for close. So that does it for the kids room and the rest of our storage and um, we've just got the bathroom left so I'll let Matthew tell you all about that. They left all the dirty work to you so what goes on in this bathroom back here? So as I was saying earlier we've been remodeling as we go you know with three kids it's kind of a it's a slow process so back here I've just put in the tiles on the floor and they need to be grouted so here we have a nature's head composting toilet which you guys are very familiar with and this is great works really really well for us we've had a hard time finding peat moss in these countries what do you ah. use in your composting toilet we use coconut core yeah um, we've used peat moss and we also have used sawdust, which you can get more readily. What do you think works the best? It really doesn't matter. I try not to look at it too, too closely when I'm, uh, <laughs> when I'm emptying it. And it is my job to empty it. Of because <laughs> Here we have just uh, storage. That's Stacy's. Stacy should really be back here telling about that stuff because, <laughs> you know, the cupboards in a bathroom are really black arts for only women fully understand. Uh, so we have a nice little fan installed in here to take away the smells when the you know, action is going down. Much like you guys, we're very aware that you need a place to keep um, your dirty washing. So we have a little spot here, dirty washing goes in there and is easily removed. We have a like designated trash here just for toilet paper. So we pop that up and the boys can just throw it there and there and then, you know, that has to come along and empty it from there. On this side we have a uh, combination shower and bath and in our bathtub we can fit all three boys I can fit in there if we have a, a ready supply of water we can fill up the bathtub and be fully submerged in the bathtub um, and it, this is uh, an old uh, galvanized tub for I guess for horses or animals livestock to, to drink out of and uh, so we converted it into a bathtub because who doesn't love having a bath when you're you know living on the road just living on the road you really don't have to make it a suffering thing you know you just got to make it as nice as you can we have a shower it's not actually in there at the moment because okay. i just took it off um because i'm doing all of the the tiling but yeah so the shower head works as well so you can have a shower or a bath depending on what you prefer and uh, instead of um having a motorcycle on the back we have a broomstick for travel. Unfortunately, <laughs> none of us have been able to get it to work except for my mother-in-law. Um, yeah, I think that was everything in the bathroom, pretty much, yeah. So, your house is amazing. I'm okay. in love with the design, I'm in love with the kids, and I'm just so inspired to see people like you, who are just so genuine and authentic and caring, making it work. How long did this build take you? Well, it's an ongoing thing, so when we first uh, bought this rig, we did a remodel. At that point, we only had two kids two boys and then it's like okay well we need to rethink at least the back so it's been an ongoing process for about four years just wow. uh, because we're living in here as well of course yeah, there's uh, still a lot we want to do yeah. yeah i mean we want to we want to make a deck you know no, I'm yeah. oh wow <laughs> What is this about cost, if you if someone wanted to replicate this themselves? We bought this, uh, it was the first thing we'd ever bought 
on eBay. It cost eight and a half thousand dollars just for the rig, but we had to rip everything out and rebuild it. And probably the build materials cost around ten thousand um, dollars, and it was just a lot of our labor. Mm -hmm. So for anyone who wants to do this at home, they either need to be very very handy, yeah. or they can just you know hire somebody like Stacy. Like and I. <laughs> so, okay, so you can just see how easily it is uh, for another kid to come along because a moment ago we didn't, he wasn't here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What was the motivation for you to live this way, especially with kids on the road? So I had wanted to travel and bring my music to people in live shows and intimate concerts. Then shortly after, uh, we got pregnant with our first son mm -hmm. and. Um, Matthew asked me, okay, well, what do you want to do now? <laughs> you know, we've got a baby on the way, and I thought about it, and I was like, well, I, I still want to get on the road and um, share my music with the world, and but, you know, with a baby, right? Most people, if, if they're pursuing particularly an artistic career, mm -hmm. it's like that has to go on hold if you're going to have a child. That, that's yeah. kind of how it, how it is. But I feel that you're doing the child a disservice in that sense, you know, because if you teach kids that they have to stop living in order to have kids then you you're not teaching them very well and as we've spent a lot of time traveling and you, you see indigenous people up on the hillsides and they've got their kids strapped to their back and it's just traditionally how it is the children would fit around lives so they're raised in a way that is alongside their parents as opposed to being shipped out to, to daycare whilst you're running around doing this kind of job so another a big part of of this lifestyle with children is that we're able to be with them. Yeah. They get to be exposed to so much yeah. and you know languages, cultures, mm -hmm. just different ways of perspectives and yeah. yeah they're not shy. <laughs> they're pretty yeah. open. Yeah, to yeah exactly. Things. And, uh, and they, they also have now they have grand dreams of playing music and have been playing yeah. music around the world themselves. So they have comfortable beds, they have they have toys, yeah. they have their books, they have all the things, the security of home, the kitchen, mm -hmm. their, their, their family, but they have a magic door yeah. that opens on Lake Atitlan or in the mountains of Mexico or on the beach or any beautiful place yeah. or not so beautiful place, um, that they have that and that's, mm -hmm. that's a really a great gift to give to a child growing up. Do you ever feel unsafe traveling in these countries or this part of the world with three kids? I haven't. No, I mean it's kind of like you just you just have to go with um, com some common sense. You yeah. know, I mean even even in you know my country, it's like wherever you go, you just have to have some common sense. Yeah, actually, you to know? be honest, I think in Latin America, I would feel safer on the whole than in the United oh, States. Oh yeah, there's so much. I mean, like the culture here is just so embracing of families. Yeah, I just so admire this lifestyle and the way you've chosen to raise your kids. How do you guys stay on the road? We're analog nomads. Yeah. So that means that we make our living as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a writer. One of the main reasons, as Stacy said earlier, we travel is because of Stacy's music. So yeah, so we keep going through live shows, album sales, yes. and Patreon. And I've seen these guys play, and they're fantastic. Um, and we're going to link all of their information below in the description. If you're interested in supporting Stacy and Matt on their Patreon, please give that link a click. You guys, thank you so much for opening up your home yes. to us. It's no been noise. such a pleasure to pleasure. see this, this magical lifestyle you've created. Okay, so let's hear how old you are as well. I'm six. I'm six. You're and me, and me. This is my bed. And how I sleep in this. And do you like sleeping in here? Yes. Yeah, is it comfortable? Yes. Yeah, and you have some toys as well? Uh, they, they, the, they go in the cubbies. Uh, I, I just, I have, look, in here, there's all that stuff and this. All the uh, outside toys and the big toys. Thanks for showing us your bed. Where is your bed? This is my bed. No way. This is your bed? Yeah. That is where the tree house is. That's where your tree house is? Yes. Oh, and you fit in here so nice. I have four. Four? Plenty of room to put your feet up on the ceiling as well, which is what everyone really wants in their bedroom. Is it comfortable? Yes. Yeah? Do you sleep really well in here? 
Yes. And you have adult books over here. Yes. Because you're an adult. No. No? <laughs> uh, adult, yeah. Not yet. And Gabriel, what's below your bed? Uh, that is Django's bed. Django's bed? Yeah. And is it pretty comfortable for him down there? Yeah. And Django is almost two? Yep. Those this, are huge. This is a scarf. And this is my boxing gloves. And this is my undies I wear. Your undies and your boxing gloves. Mm -hmm.